Well, it's crunch time now. Welcome back to the Garden Hutch. In this episode, we'll discuss week 11 of 2022. Let's get going. Well, if your yard is anything like ours here on the homestead, the weeds are starting to grow and they're starting to flower and they're getting about time to mow. So one of the things I wanted to discuss first this week is my instinct is to go ahead and mow as soon as I need to. We cut our grass uh, four inches. Uh, the reason for that is we have uh, fireflies and um, we kind of like to look at them in the summertime. So the higher you grow them, you don't kill them. Anyway, so we prefer four inches when we cut our grass. What we've done recently is in the early spring, we've started cutting it at five inches for the first three or four. And the reason being is the hen bit, that's the little purple flowers and stuff, uh, little white flowers, that sorts of stuff that are popping up in your yard. Those are gonna attract early pollinators. Now, we talk about it, we preach about it, and I'm sure everybody else that you watch that does gardening says the same things. Pollinators are very important to success for your garden. So what we recommend doing is at least during this part until the actual grass grass starts growing really thick, I recommend just if you have to mow, just hop on your mower, put it on five inches, go over the yard real quick. It'll knock the tops of it off, kind of make everything look uniform, but it will also leave the vast majority of the flowers, <clears throat> pardon me, flowers in the ground for your pollinators to come through. So that's a big deal. If you can get the pollinators used to your yard now, they're gonna be there in the early spring, um, you know, early summer, late spring, that kind of time, whenever you need them for your squash, cucumbers, and that sort of stuff. One thing I did want to show everyone this week are the new onion bed that we put in two weeks ago. Um, and you can see, I'll put my hand down for sort of a, a reference there, but these onions grow incredibly quickly this time of year, um, which kind of goes back just one more time. You still have time to do it if you would like, is to go ahead and buy your onion sets. And when you do, again, you can over plant them, right? So we do ours as opposed to the recommended three inches. We do them, you know, about an inch and a half between them or whatever. Um, and then what we'll do is when the time comes, we'll pull this onion here and we'll eat it and we'll go every other one and we'll go all the way through the row and we'll leave every other one in the bed to go to bulb and we can pull those in the uh, late summer, early fall and dry them or cure them, I guess is a better word. And we can use those in the fall. So you can see that's a lot of onions and it's not very much room. I think we ended up using a little over five feet in this one. We do have uh, three different uh, beds dedicated to onions. We also just kind of we had about, I don't know, 20 of the um, onions left out of the set. So we just threw them in random places in our pea buckets and that kind of stuff. Wait a second, that didn't sound right. In the bucket that contains our peas. Maybe that's a better way of phrasing that. Um, so anyway, so if you have the chance and you have the space, I really recommend grabbing yourself, uh, you know, 100 or so onions and just finding a small pot, uh, spot in your garden, planting them. It will really pay off and quickly. As we talked about in the last week, this time of year, a lot of the work is prep work, right? So um, we know that next week we're getting in our potatoes. We're also getting in our strawberries and we would like to get those in the ground by our next weekend. So that means, you know, the next time we do our vlog, we'll have those planted. It also means that there's a little bit of prep work that we like to do ahead of time. So what we did was for the potato area, I just went through and I, I broke the top of it up really well. We're gonna do a little different than last year and I'll kind of show you folks how we do that. Uh, you know, we'll still use the straw to heal it whenever it comes up. Um, but anyway, we'll get into that. But the strawberry bed, what we did, we used the organic compost and we've had it kind of sitting in there for about a month and a half or so. So what I did was I just went through, gently raked it. I added just a handful of bone meal. I also added a bit of eggshells. Uh, whenever we get them in there, and I'll show you what we're gonna do. We have a whole bag of eggshells saved. Uh, we're gonna use those to help us prevent the slugs and things. Uh, it's a really cool trick. I've seen other people use it. So anyway, so that's another thing that we had to get done this week. We had to get prepared for our potatoes and our strawberries. Um, so what we'll do is instead of, we'll make extra videos this time of year on how we plant things. So keep a lookout for those. 
If you have any recommendations, by the way, for videos you'd like to see that we're planting, just leave them in the comments below and we'll try to get to those. It's always exciting anytime you get to actually put something in the ground. So this week we were able to get our cabbage plants in the ground. Um, as you can see, we have our butterfly net around them. Get in there so you can sort of see the way we have it set up in there. So whenever I measured these beds out to cover this area, one of the things I wanted to do was be able to sort of rotate the crops internally. What I mean by that is I built this bed specifically for cabbages. And if you plant consistently in the same area, you have a tendency to attract specific pests and diseases that are not beneficial for those specific plants. So as you can see, what we've done is sort of set it up in a grid and you can tell here we've covered this with leaves and then we'll have a cabbage move down and you kind of have, and you can see it's sort of like a checker. Because we can plant cabbages twice a year, what we plan on doing is our fall cabbages will be reverse so you know the leaves will be here and the cabbage will be here and that'll help a little bit with the diseases and such the other thing that we plan on doing is during what they call the rest period so we'll our cabbages will come out probably mid-june um, early july somewhere around there and then we won't plant again until middle of august we'll put in the fall cabbages so during that time, what we'll do is we'll go through and I'll put the DE down and I'll also leave this netting on it as we, when, after we take them out, we'll cut the cabbages out, put the whole uh, bed with DE and cover it again. And what'll happen is that DE, as it soaks through the ground, it'll take care of any larvae or anything that may be in the ground. It'll also help uh, change the pH in the soil to help get rid of any disease that may have developed during the life cycle of our spring cabbages. So I did want to give you an update on the greenhouse. We are still moving a lot of these plants this time of year indoors. Now we haven't had to do that this week, but we will this upcoming week. I believe there are, the weatherman says mid thirties. And as you all know, here at the garden hutch, if the weatherman says mid thirties, we plan on it freezing. So we kind of take everything inside to the, the lighthouses that we have set up. We just have an artificial light system that we can we leave them inside and it keeps them nice and warm for the day. Uh, just real quick, you can see these are our new tomatoes. So it didn't take long for them to get up and um, I've already put the second layer of dirt on this. Um, I really need to take the time next year whenever I don't have as many outside projects and do a video on how to do the tomatoes. It really is a much easier way than what I see a lot of people try and it prevents a whole lot of transplanting and that kind of stuff and these are some of Leslie's flowers and they're coming up um, as a side note she really is interested in getting a little bit more involved with the YouTube channel um, I'm sure a lot of you folks would prefer seeing her as opposed to my ugly mug on here anyway um, but she really she's enjoyed the interaction so far with um, the community and she really wants to sort of start over on her flower videos and sort of walk everybody through what she plants, her mentality, that kind of thing. But it may be, she may get to it this year, or it may be um, next year before she starts on that. But I'm excited for her to get into it. And I, I really appreciate all you folks who have, you know, subscribed to the channel and given us positive feedback. It really does keep us going. Um, and even though we love gardening, uh, I didn't realize I would enjoy the actual social aspect of YouTube as much. So. Just a quick thanks to all you folks who participate in the comment section and like the videos and such. So since, as you can see, the fruit trees are starting to bloom already, one of the things I wanted to go over with everyone before we started was sort of our approach to the fruit trees. We've never gotten fruit off of these trees. Um, almost always it's been because of some sort of varmint. We've never really taken care of them because I didn't know how. And they weren't really taken care of beforehand either. So they were, it, it was kind of a project to start with. So I wasn't really in a big hurry. Anyway, this year I plan on putting a lot more attention into the fruit trees. So what we plan on doing is we're gonna wait for the trees to bloom and we'll mark each tree as it blooms. Once it has bloomed and I don't have to worry about the pollinators anymore in the blooms, I'm gonna spray it every 10 days with neem oil. And I'm going to get all the trees on the same schedule, right? So they're not going to each have their own schedule. Just every 10 days during the summer, I'll come out and spray all of them. And I, I spoke to a gentleman who had a peach orchard in Arkansas for a long time. And he said, if you use the neem oil uh, to every 10 days, 
you'll be able to keep most of the pests away. Um, so we had last year, for example, we had a bunch of apples that were actually on there, but they had these little, they looked like squash bugs almost, and they would like get on the apple and they'd bite it, and then the apple would just kind of rot wherever they bit them from. And apparently the neem oil prevents those bugs from getting on your fruit trees. So that kind of brings me to what do we do with all that fruit, right? I mean, we have last year at the end of um, the fall, and I'm not complaining, this is a great problem to have, but we already ran out of freezer space and cabinet space for all the vegetables that we had pickled or frozen, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm thinking if I get some apples this year, I would really like to make some homemade apple cider, some hard apple cider. I'm not sure how that'll go. Um, I've made some in the past and it turned out uh, very, very stout. I enjoyed it um, a lot more the day I drank it than I did the day after, if that makes sense. So I'm not sure, but it just seems like they're here. I'd like to put the effort, and that way, if, if it's not gonna work, right, if we're not gonna get anything from them, I may just remove the fruit trees altogether and either start over with different trees or use that area for something else. So the last topic I wanted to discuss in week 11's vlog are our bees. Um, our bees have left us. Uh, you can see behind me, we've taken the hives apart. We're gonna get a bunch of honey out of them. We're not sure exactly why the bees left. Uh, it's one of two reasons. Um, either A, there was a skunk that came out and it was clawing at them. You could see the marks, you could see that kind of stuff and you could smell the skunk around the beehive. Um, the other thing was when I got inside of it, the bees had just filled the entire thing with honey. Uh, there was hardly any room in there and I thought only the top when I inspected it at the end of last year, it looked to me like only the top box was full of honey. So I was, in my mind, I was thinking, well, I'll leave this in here. The bees will have it for the winter time uh, and the spring, I'll pull that, put a new box on. Well, I'm an idiot apparently, because if I would have just either added a new box, I'd still have the hive. Um, good news is we know that the bees are still here because as I went through to clean the box out, I would sit the uh, trays outside that still had some of the honey, the ones we weren't gonna cultivate from it. And you could see all the bees. I mean, they were, they were just swarming all over to take the honey to their new place. So anyway, so that was a mistake on my part. You know, you live and you learn. And um, as the local bee man that we buy our stuff from tells me all the time, he says, Jeremy, they're insects. And we're trying to get those insects to do what we want. So it's, you know, it's a, a kind of a live and learn type situation. So anyway, what we've done is we've cleaned the hives up and we've put them in the barn. Uh, we, we're not going to get more bees this year. We'll probably wait till next year or the year after. Uh, what I would really like to do in a perfect world, I would like to wait till we get our milking goats and we get their area built up um, and then inside of their area, build the bees a separate little area that's kind of fenced off. That way uh, we can keep any predators away from it. As once we get the, the milking goats, we'll also have to get a herding dog that stays outside in the evenings to make sure coyotes don't get to them. Um, so anyway, so that's a rambling explanation of the bees. A moral of the story is we're gonna get a bunch of honey the bees are still here someplace and they're still going to be, you know, uh, pollinating the yard and that sort of stuff. But this will be the only time we get their honey. Well, as usual, I would like to thank all of you folks that have made it this far into the video. If you have not, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the little icon, and YouTube will let you know when we upload new content. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Until next time, I hope you folks take care of yourselves. Peace.